Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. Today, it's the playoffs. We've got Wigan coming up. And you know what? Last episode at the end of it, I think I was a bit harsh on us. I think I was I was a bit doom and gloom because we're in the playoffs. I, we shouldn't be here at all. We have no right to be in the playoffs. But here we are. We're here and we should celebrate that. We should celebrate Mark Mason's 24 goals in all competitions this season. His, his seven assists, his, his seven player of the matches, even his seven yellow cards. Mason, it, He's a, we're a one-man team, all right? We are, we are a one-man team. Mason has absolutely carried us, I've got to say, I think, to the playoffs. I've been doing a little bit of analysis. I think he really has just carried us to the playoffs. If we look at um, selection info and things like that, him and Coley. Coley, in the first half of the season, was on fire. Second half, not so much. But he has carried us to the playoffs. And actually, to be fair, Joe Howe sitting on a seven rating for the whole season in league games. He's been very instrumental as well, although only played about half a season or so. We really are Mark Mason FC. We really, really are. And I've still not decided what to do this summer. A lot of you in the comment section have said maybe we should sell him and, and try and get some money, but I'd only sell him for a lot of money. So it, it depends. If we go up, if we, you know, if we win the playoffs, it might be worth keeping him because he would probably be the only player, along with Mick Atkinson, who we own, who could probably take on League One. But no, this is something to celebrate. I think I was just a bit miffed last episode because we got to the playoffs and I really just didn't expect that. I just expected to have a, have a rubbish season. And I kind of, in the back of my mind, was thinking it's going to be a rubbish season, which is going to be really entertaining for you guys because we've had two really good seasons of success. And I thought Football League will struggle in this first season, but that'll be really entertaining. So I think, I think as the creator sort of side of me, I was thinking like, maybe I, I was worried that you wouldn't be entertained. Worried you wouldn't be entertained. But from comments, you've all said like, you know, you've been entertained this season and it's been really good. So I think I was just a bit, I was thinking with my creator head too much rather than just going with the game sort of thing, which which is what I, what I usually do, but usually it sort of pans out how I think it's going to pan out. This season hasn't panned out at all how I thought it was going to, but I suppose for the better, because we're in the playoffs now. We're taking on Wigan today in the semi-finals. We've got two legs against them, home and away. Home leg, first of all. And you know what? Maybe we can cause an upset, I don't know. This is the line that we're going to go for. Uh, Andrew Stitz in goal for the rest of the season, of course. White's just come back from his injury. Uh, very low on that sharpness, though, so he won't play in the playoffs at all. Back line of Turiak, Happy, Wakely, although they should be swapped round, actually. Uh, Atkinson on the right-hand side, of course. Bowley in CDM with Broccoli and Howell just ahead of him. With Coley on the left, Russell on the white. Uh, on the white, on the right, and Mark Mason starting up front as the attacking forward, or the advanced forward, rather. Wigan, we've not beaten them yet in this series. I think we played three games against them, uh, and we've lost two, drawn one. So it's been difficult playing against them, but you know what? <sighs> There's always a time to turn things around, and this could be today. Right then, kickoff is upon us today, and whatever happens in the playoffs, I think we can be really happy with what we've achieved this season. I think we can be, we've can massively overachieved. I think next season, we probably do need to have a bit of an overhaul. I think we have had a bit of first season look. But it's not uncommon for teams when they come straight up from the National League into League Two to do well. You know, in the past few seasons, Bristol Rovers have been promoted. Uh, Luton have been promoted. This season, Lincoln City are going to be promoted. Tranmere look like they could be promoted as well. Lincoln City in the playoffs last season, of course, after their first first season promoted. Tranmere playoffs this season after their first season promoted. Forest Green are doing very well this season. So, it, I mean, to be fair, it's not uncommon. And I think maybe that's just what we're experiencing. We're experiencing that sort of first season real burst. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens today. But whatever happens, we can be really proud. Uh, let me know in the chat if you're watching live. If you think we're going to win today's playoffs or if we're going to lose them, I'd probably put money on losing if I'm honest with you because I don't think our form, especially in the second half of the season, has been particularly good against Wigan at all. But, you know, you never know with these things. Perhaps, I mean, the previous few games, the past five, six, seven games or so, we've only lost one game. So maybe that's a bit of an indicative form of what's going to happen as Howell on the edge of the air plays into Russell, who puts it in the back of the net for his 10th goal of the season all competitions. Another assist for Howell. He is the gift that keeps... This is the example that I, I mean. Howell is nowhere near good enough for League Two. Nowhere near. And yet he is the third best player this season for us in terms of average rating. He's been superb. He really just is the gift that keeps on giving. And I love him to bits, Joe Howell. He is already going, going down as one of my favourite ever players I've ever used in Football Manager. Just because... He's playing so above his actual level. 
and yet he is consistently performing. Really, we, should, we shouldn't be anywhere near the playoffs. We shouldn't be dominating this opening fixture of the playoffs as well. So I'm a bit... I just, I just can't... I just don't understand it because I've never, ever, ever had a game this good a football manager. Never. Never. I think maybe back in the days, I did have a Lincoln City save where I went up from League 2 to League 1 to the Championship to the Premiership in, in straight seasons. I think that's happened to me Maybe once before. Probably going to be a good idea to make some substitutes in a minute or so. We'll watch what happens from this highlight as the ball comes straight to us. And and that's why we're not good enough for playoffs. Because stuff like that happens. And that's not the first time it's happened in an episode where our defence have just completely and utterly switched off like that. Like that could have been an easily prevented goal. Easily, easily, easily. And yet somehow it's just bounced off one defender's head. They've not bothered and and they've scored the goal. That is ridiculous. Big up to Wigan as well for bringing more than half of the attendance today. Two and a half thousand from Wigan make up nearly the 4,000 attendance today. All the glory support is coming out as well for the playoffs today. We've had about a thousand on average home fans every game. So we've had nearly 2,000 today. 1,800 or so that have turned up. So an extra 800 glory supporters turning up for this. Ooh, plastics. Uh, Wigan coming forward, nearly scoring another goal. So despite the, the dominance of today's game, Wigan actually looking like the stronger team in the closing minutes or so. Um, I have completely forgot to make substitutes as well. So we won't bother making any at this late stage of the game. It's not going to make a difference. And it looks like we do go into the second leg one all, which is interesting. It's anyone's game still. Oh, that game as well was a new record attendance, 3,900. We'll take that, to be fair. The previous record was 1,900 in the game against Doncaster earlier on in the season. I think we won that 1-3-1 or so. 55,000 pounds in ticket. That should be on TV, that game as well. Uh, so we've gained 23,000 pounds. So we're, we're now, from the TV that is, so we're now 305,000 pounds in the good, which is nice. Ah, also 16 league draws in the <laughs> in this season as well. Fantastic. We have got that record. Nason still needs to score six goals in the next game or so to get the, the league scoring goal, that is, the league scoring record. Right then, in the in the chat section, your predictions, please, now for the upcoming game. What is the result gonna be? What is the result gonna be? And this is the, this is the, this is a big we're not gonna change the lineup either. We're gonna go for the same lineup because I think that's it's just the best lineup to go for, so we won't change that at all. <sighs> This could be, if we lose this, this could be the last game for a lot of players that we know and love. Notably Mark Mason. Notably Mark Mason. Um, I think we are going to do it. I think we are going to offer him out to clubs. Um, I'd, uh, at least for £250,000. At least two fifty. I feel like selling him for less than that is a waste. Now, as I mentioned earlier... We are Mark Mason FC. Here's the reason we're in the playoffs. And here's the reason that we're doing so well with season. If we do sell him, we're going to miss his goals. And on the grounds that I've yet to find another striker that's sort of his backup that can score goals. I don't know if if we well, if we sell him as we can go one nil up. If we sell him, I just don't think we're going to be very good next season. It's a risk worth taking though, because if we do sell him for a lot of money... We will be, a, I, I'm pretty sure we will be able to upgrade our training facilities and everything like that. And I think that, you know, obviously for the long run will be very, very good as Howell puts his shot against the post there. Very unlucky there. As we mentioned in other episodes as well, Wakely, I'm pretty sure he's going to be gone and things like that. Uh, there are some players that we're going to have to say goodbye to, but next seat, I mean, I say this every year. We all we do struggle a lot this you know the past two summers with getting players in. I think if we got promoted, we would struggle again trying to attract League One quality players to come to us. That would be very very difficult. I think if we don't get promoted, I think that would actually be better for us, which is almost kind of why I'm, I've been very unenthusiastic about the playoffs as well as Russell's goal was offside. Unfortunately, it's not going to count. It's why I've kind of been a bit lackluster and unenthusiastic about these playoffs because I think going up again is going to be very, very tough for us to sign good players. I mean, we said that last year and of course we ended up in the playoffs this year. It's 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 a very, very bizarre situation to be in. But I think, oh, Russell, what a fantastic goal that was, to be fair. That was sublime, putting us back on level terms with Wigan. Staying in the division we are, we'll gain some reputation and I think 
players that are of League Two quality will, will notice us more and want to come to us more so than if we got promoted, which sounds a bit strange. I just don't think we get the, the right quality of players in if we got promoted. I just don't think our reputation would catch up with us that much. If we stay at this level, it might just be slightly better for us to have a more competitive side next season. I don't know. I think I might be talking just an absolute load of load of rubbish as Wigan gain the lead. But I think away goals do count. Maybe. I could be at, I could be lying to you there, to be fair. So if we grab another one, we might win the game on away goals. If not, it will go to extra time and things like that. But we need to do something. Mason, in what could be his final game for us, is really not playing very well. And considering, I mean, let's be dramatic here. This could be his final game. So let's take him off the pitch so he can, he can clap to the, the away fans. Um, there's only 86 of our away fans coming, but at least he can go to them and clap them and they can say goodbye to him if, if he is leaving. Okay, we'll bring Belcher on as well for Broccoli. We'll, do, we'll make that change as well. Corner for us then. 80, 67th minute, sorry. Tony Russell, who has suddenly just come into his own in the playoffs, scoring all three of our playoff goals. Puts us back on level terms with Wigan. Now, I, I really cannot remember if it's away goals or not. If it is, phew, we are in, in for a treat. But with 15 minutes left on the clock, I really thought we'd get absolutely hammered by Wigan, which is... And I suppose that might be the story of the season. I thought we were going to get hammered all season. You guys thought we were going to get hammered all season. But it's these players. These players are the ones that just won't ever give up. For the past three seasons, the vast majority of these players that have been playing for us constantly have not ever given up, ever. And, and and that's what it is, I guess. That is what it is. I just, these players are beautiful and I love them to bits. The clock is ticking down though and we are going to extra time. Okay, it is extra time out there. Um, what we will do then is make the final change. Bowley is exhausted out there. Lee Masters is going to come on for him in that CDM position. I'll tell you what, though. I think all our luck has come in this one save, actually. I won't lie to you. I think all our luck has come into this one save. Because if we look at... Oh, my God. Tommy Hole has scored his... What a time to get his first goal of it. He's been here for half a season. Done absolutely nothing. And yet has just scored his first goal for the club. To put us 4-3 up on aggregate against Wigan. <sighs> Oh, if, and, and I was about to say, I think this save, we've been extremely lucky. If you've been a long-time subscriber, you'll know how incredibly unlucky that we have been. You look back on the Lincoln Loco 1 save, we lost countless cup finals. I think we lost about three or four League Cup finals and, and FA Cup finals. Notably, we lost a, a Europa League final there as well. If you go back to the Real Oviedo save, I just have to mention the Valencia debacle, and that just brings back everything we've been so unlucky in the past but maybe this save is the time when foot managers decided that no actually we're going to give you all the luck in the world we should not be anywhere near the playoffs we should not be anywhere near the playoff final and yet as the the, the referee is going to blow his whistle in the next 10 seconds or so we're going to Wembley for the third time in three seasons the first time we went we won the FA trophy the second time we went we won the playoffs and we're now going <sighs> We're now going to the playoff final again. All right. Who are we going to be playing against, by the way? Uh, Stevenage, interestingly. Stevenage in the playoff finals. Oh, dear me. How is this? How has this happened? Really, how has this happened? And Tony Russell. Oh, what a player he's turned out to be in these playoffs. He was superb in front of goal last season. Uh, is he up for contract renewal next season? Can we get him on a free transfer? contract in, he is to be fair we might be able to get Tony Russell next season permanently at the club although he's only apparently good enough for Vanarama National League so maybe I don't know it's this is the thing none of our players really should be good enough to be challenging for promotion in League 2 and yet as we I, I think it literally must be the team spirit that I think that has to be it and that and just these players have massive belief in themselves I think that's what it is Obviously, an awful lot of luck as well, because I don't think I'm this good at the game to get us here. I mean, I think there's a lot of luck involved in this as well. So we've got 10 days now until our third Wembley appearance. Uh, the positive of this is that we will get a lot of money from this playoff final, just from the attendance and ticket sales and stuff. This could actually, if we make a lot of money, this might put me off 
selling Mark Mason. I think actually as well, I think whatever happens, uh, as a football league club, at the end of every season, you get, I think they're called solidarity payments and the FA just or the EFL give you money for just being a club. And that actually could be quite a lot of money. Look at him. He's, he's training on a 9.1. I love him. I don't know if I can part with him. If we get promoted, though, can he do it again? Can he get another 20-plus goals in a season? Is this the summer where it's cash in now or risk him having a rubbish season next year and no one wants to buy him? It's, it's really difficult to know what to do. It's also worth looking at Lincoln City, actually. Uh, they have just been in the championship for their first season. They were actually in the playoffs for most of the season. How have they... They're, in the, they're actually in, in the championship playoffs right now, I think. Seventh. Oh, no, seventh might just be out. Seventh is just outside the championship playoffs, which is unfortunate, to be fair. Uh, but that's their first season in the championship, Lincoln City. So maybe it's just a Lincoln thing in this, in this football manager. Maybe it's just a Lincoln thing that the Lincoln clubs do extraordinarily well. If I'm honest with you, this is the best I've ever, ever seen Lincoln City do in any football manager game where I've not been the manager. I've never seen them do this well in, in any experiment, unless we're given them money, of course, and they do quite well. But I've never seen them do this well in any experiment, any save. So maybe this save just really favours Lincoln teams. So here we go then. <laughs> the playoff final. Oh, this shouldn't really be happening. But we're here now, and now we're here. We may as well try our very, very best to win it. We're going to leave a team the exact same because it played phenomenally well against Wigan. Let's go for it. This this now really could be Mark Mason's final game. Like this really, really could be his final game. So I really hope he, he bags a hat-trick or something and then we lose 4-1 or 4-3 rather if he got the hat-trick. Uh, <laughs> you never know. You never know what's going to happen in these games. I, If we go up again, I don't quite understand how it will have happened. We really do not deserve it if i'm honest with you we do not deserve it we're not ready for it we weren't ready for league two but we've taken that by storm so maybe we are ready i don't know i really do not know what's gonna happen but here we are wembley once again the third time in three seasons stevenage are between us and league league one this i didn't honestly i thought the football league was going to be so much harder than it has been and yet the first half, it's the first half of the season that did it, really. Because we had such a good first half of the season, that's the reason we're here today. If we didn't, if we just lost one more game, we wouldn't be here. If we, yeah, if we were three points worse off, we wouldn't be here. One of those games where we've, you know, picked up, picked up a late win, for example, that is what has put us here. And it's just a little bit of luck, I think, more than anything else. A bit of skill against Wigan. And here we are in what is... Again, quite typical, actually, of our recent games on episodes. Very, very cagey first half. No highlights at all. But look at the stats. We have been miles on top. Oh, it bodes well for the second half, but I, I'm not quite sure I'm, I'm ready to take on League One. All right, half time, nil-nil, no highlights. We have been the stronger side in terms of stats. I'm very interested to see what the actual attendance is. Uh, predicted before the game to be around 51,000 it is and we've brought 10,000 of our own fans that is huge 10,000 especially when you consider that our new stadium that's being built won't be ready next season but we're ready the season afterwards is only five and a half thousand you've got to think you know this quick success that we've been having perhaps our new stadium won't actually be big enough as I, th I thought Stephen were about to put a dagger in our hearts they've come back into the game to fair at the start of the second half playing a little bit better but I don't quite know what is going to break the deadlock here we're going to go on to attacking and we're going to say get creative out there I think I, I'm very reluctant to take Mason off but of course Hull did score his first goal in extra time in last episode or last game rather so he could be a super sub to bring on again worryingly our defense has all played very well on 7.1 ratings which does mean that they've been coming forward quite well so they've had to obviously do something to warrant that 7.2 7.1 rating which must mean good defending has there only been one highlight in this whole game that is ridiculous we're going to bring agu on the right hand side for russell because despite him playing so well in the semi-finals he's been the worst player on the pitch today for us 
Bowley again, he's looking very tired. So we'll take him off for Masters. There are the two changes that we'll make. With 10 minutes to go, there's a highlight. Or is this just the, 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 the changes to be made? Or is it actually a highlight? As Howell gets the ball, shoots from... Oh my goodness, that was not far off from distance there, to be fair. 10 minutes to go then. Looks like we are going to be going to extra time. Unless Stephen is sure here. As they are coming forward, the ball goes all the way out to Courtney Wilden, who Coley with a huge tackle there. His clearance, though, not the best. Preston on the ball, and he plays it back to Nugent. Whew. Nugent had to control that, otherwise Mark Mason had that all day. And he might still have it now as he comes forward on the ball in towards Coley. Coley holds play up back to Turiak. Now Turiak coming forward, puts the ball forward to Mason. Oh, saved by the goalkeeper. That was a beautiful opportunity. The highlight does continue though as they're behind, they're behind and oh, they've nearly scored. I thought a free kick had been taken up there, but it hadn't been. We've been lucky, very lucky. I think Wakeley must have got injured. I think that's what it was right at the end there. Oh, there could have been goals at either end of the pitch. I have to say, I think we have been the better team throughout this. But for the second year in a row, I think I think I think we went to the extra time last season, didn't we? I'm sure we went to extra time last season, the playoff final. I can't remember now, but for the second time in this episode, at least maybe the second time in two finals, we are going to extra time with Stevenage, looking like I don't know. They've looked a little bit stronger towards the end of the game. First half we dominated. Second half they've come back into it. But we're still the better side, I think. We still got one more change to make, but I want to leave that and save that in case we go to penalties to bring on uh, Tommy Hole, because he's probably got a decent penalty on him. Free kick for us. Turiak puts it in. He hits the post of the crossbar. One of the two there. Agonisingly close. It's been a really cagey game in terms of highlights because nothing happening until the final 10 minutes or so. And this first half, an extra, extra, extra time has, has flown by with just that one highlight. And I think... I don't think anyone's going to break the deadlock here today. I think we're going to penalties, and that is always a horrible way to sort it out. Defensively, we really have been rock solid. Look at those ratings. I think, to be fair, Steamage defence as well has also been very, very good. It looks like it is going to penalties, so we're going to take off. We'll take off uh, Dan Happy. We'll bring on Tommy Hole, another striker there, just at the back. It won't make a difference in these final few moments. He's just going to come on for penalties which is what the game is going to. Right. In the chat section right now, talk to me what is going to happen in these penalties. I don't think we did go to penalties actually last season, did we? I don't think we did go to because I would have done this last season. I don't remember doing it. So, um, penalty taking, finishing. Let's go on finishing maybe because Mason up front, then Agu, then Tommy Hole, then it's Mick Atkinson. And then we're going to put it onto Coley. All right, that's maybe risky. We'll put it onto Coley. And actually, to be fair, we'll just bring out the rest of the list now. That might be the same as the auto select. I don't know, but um, we'll, we'll we'll go for this anyway. Howell is awful at penalties, by the way, as you can see. So we'll put him very, very at the end of that list there. So, right. Penalties it is. Chat section. Talk to me. Oh, it's this end of the pitch. Okay, what's happening here then? Are Steven is going to score it? No, they're not going to score it. Um, what am I on about? They. It's been a long day. They did. They did score it. It was sort of touched in by Jed Andrew there. Mason puts his in the back of the net though. One all, all right. One all. That, that's good. Um, Jealous now on the ball. He's going to take his penalty. We know Jed Andrew is really good at saving penalties, but maybe not today. Maybe not today. It was the FA Trophy final that went to penalties. That's what it was. And Jed Andrew saved us there. Agu, to level the scores up, does level it up for us, which is really good. Jed Andrew, another chance to make himself a hero as Wilden takes his penalty. Luther Wilden, not Courtney Wilden. Jed Andrew with the save. Come on. Right. Score this, Tommy Hole, and we will have the advantage. Three penalties in. Tommy Hole saved. Okay, right. It doesn't matter too much because they missed theirs. That's absolutely fine. It just means Jed Andrew has to do his job once again as Thompson steps up. I love him to bits. Jed Andrew, he is the penalty specialist. Mick Atkinson now to put us ahead in the penalty shootout. Again, another huge save from their goalkeeper. Two penalties apiece, two scored, two missed from both sides. 
if they score this and we miss, then okay, we've got to score this, otherwise Stevenage win. We have to score this, otherwise Stevenage win. <sighs> okay, Coley, who's been superb all season. Tell me now, goal or not? Goal or not? I don't... Oh, I'm struggling to watch this, if I'm honest with you. Coley has to score to keep us in this. And he has. Okay. We're now down to sudden death. Down to sudden death. If their man scores this, we have to score it. That's that's what it is. They've scored it, which means we have to score. And are they? I hope they don't just have to bring the player on. I don't, I don't want to watch this every single time. Like, I get that we watch it then because that's, you know, when, when Coley took his penalty because that was a big moment. But every single penalty now might have to be like this. In fact, it will be like this because it's either going to be stay in it or win it. And so we're going to have to, to... To be fair, that was a quick penalty. I didn't even see that. I was putting my car key down. I don't know why I'm playing with that. I, I find that I play with things a lot during episodes, which is a bit annoying. Okay. I'm very nervous as well because you can tell that I'm talking a lot. Um, Jed Andrews saved that penalty. Number 18, Stefan Broccoli. If he scores this, we're a League One club. Oh, God. A, a League One club. I don't think we're near ready for this. Here he goes. He scores. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, we're a League One club. We're a League One club. I... Jeez. <sighs> Okay, this changes everything. I'm over the moon that we've been promoted, but this should not have happened. Really, this should not have happened. This season, we should have been in a massive relegation battle. And I was actually a bit upset that we weren't. I was a bit like miffed that we'd actually done so well this season because I was waiting for a season for us to just sort of not do well because I thought that would be very entertaining. But at the other end of a spectrum, we have been promoted... Board set initial budgets of £17,000 per week and a transfer budget of 43000 That's progress. Uh, we've been promoted, unbelievable promotion, promoted. I'm a lad, of course I am. Bowley's fitness is, is out the window. We've been given 100... We've got to pay £125,000 to be shared amongst the players. That's a lot of money. And uh, we've re re yeah, received nearly half a million pounds for... Comp this is what I mean, the solidarity payments. Given We've just been given half a million pounds for playing in the league. What that means is we have over a million pounds in the bank, over half, of, nearly 600,000 from gate receipts, that nearly half a million in solidarity payments and, and more money in match day income and TV revenue. A million pounds in the bank. Now I'm really thinking, do we need to sell Mark Mason? Because a million pounds in the bank is a lot of money. More than I thought we'd ever have. Right, before things happen then, Make a board request. Facilities. Improve training facilities. Please do it. They're good enough. They're not good enough. They're really not good enough, Eddie Foy. What are you on about? I urge you to reconsider. I urge you. And they, they reject the request. They reject the request for new facilities. Let's just have a look at our facilities. We have... Poor training facilities, poor youth facilities. They are not good enough. We've got a million pounds, lads. We need to invest some of this. And if they're not doing this right now, if they're not investing a million, you know, we've got a million pounds in the bank. If they're not willing to invest with that in the bank, I don't think the money we might get from a Mark Mason sale would make any difference to their their talking. So maybe it's worth keeping him. Oh, it just makes it harder to know what to do with Mark Mason now. Right, um, youth facilities, can you upgrade those, please? No, it's, please. No, they they flat out, I hate the chairman. All right, can I, can I leak this somehow? I want to leak it. Let's get him out. I don't like him. Let's also, can we invest in just junior coaching at least? Improve youth recruitment, please. No, we don't have the funding. Okay, maybe it's just because we've just only just got that money. We've, it's going to take time for it to reset. I'll ask again in pre-season, but I am concerned that the board are just unwilling to invest in the club. I really cannot believe this season. I mean, phew. Mason, of course, fans play overseas. The fans will be very cross to see him go if he does go. 
I don't know what's going to happen yet still. So wait and see. Coley second, Turiak third with uh, Andrew signing of a season and Mark Mason, of course, young player of the season. <sighs> I mean, I'm, I'm over the moon with this. But at the same time, we'll discuss plans again. And all we have to say, they'll love this when I say it. Um, it's a tough season. We'll probably come back down. Let's bring some new faces in and try and keep us up. And they all love that, which is actually fine. Um, oh, Okay. Right. Uh, Four-week preseason. That seems a bit short, but okay. Um, Mason, third top goal scorer in the league with 22 goals. Um, only just behind Trevor Perkins and, and Peter Butler, so very good performance from him. Again, why he's not been signed and players aren't, and teams aren't coming in for him, I don't know, because they should do for like a million pounds. But you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens over summer, and who knows what's going to happen. I am over the moon that we've won it. I really am. But I know a lot of you in the comment section have said how you want to see a struggle and. I'd like that, but I can't help it. I can't help a team playing well. This is the thing. So, they, I mean, they, Joe Howe, what a man. I love him to bit. Second best average rating in the entire team this season. And he is nowhere near good enough to play at this level. He's Vanarama North-South, apparently. And yet, he's one of the best players in the squad and best players in the league this season in terms of average rating. I just don't know what's done it. I'm not sure how we've got here, but we have. And League One next season. And I'd love to stay talking to you, but actually, I've, phew, my granddad's on a date tonight and I'm his taxi. I need to go and pick him up. So I need to end the episode here so I'm not late to pick him up. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. Please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time for League One. League Bloody One.